very good morning and welcome everyone to this course physics 1 this course is generally made for undergraduate level btech students myself gopal chakraborty assistant professor department of physics greater kolkata college of engineering and management baripur you can meet me personally at college premises ground floor physics lab you can also send me a mail regarding your query or doubt for today's course or any doubt related to this physics of your subject to my given mail address that is god physics 6 at the rate gmail.com or gopal dot chakravarti underscore gkcem at the rate jis group dot org you can also subscribe my youtube channel for more videos i have already uploaded lots of video on your topic physics according to your syllabus so you can consult or check that videos okay and if you if you feel any doubt you can contact me so for the today's class or this course i am your subject teacher now the course pages are www.mackoutexam.net and www.mackoutwb.ac.in The corresponding syllabus for the subject physics is already uploaded there in the university website. So you can download or check the syllabus from there. The course title is Physics 1. It has a subject code BSPH101. It is under the category of Basic Science course. This course has a credit for 3 lecture per week and 1 tutorial per week. So this course is generally made for BTEC students of first year only. So, computer science, civil, mechanical, these departmental students will going to study this topic and this course for their odd semester. And alternatively, electrical and electronics departmental students will going to study this course on this topic for their event semester. Today, the topic that I will going to cover are Dielectric polarization, dielectric constant, displacement vector, dielectric susceptibility, and the relation between them. So, uh, this topic is under the module Electromagnetism and Dielectric Magnetic Properties of Material. So, this is under the module 3. In uh, my last videos that I have uploaded that covered under the module 1 all the topics under module 1 so here from the today's class i will start the new module that is module 3 electromagnetism and dielectric magnetic properties of the material so this module actually consists of three different chapters first one is dielectric second one is electromagnetic theory and third one is magnetic properties of material so today i will discuss this topic so prerequisite for this topic is elementary idea of electrostatics fundamental idea of vector and mathematics the course objective is learn about dielectric materials and their properties and relation between them after completion of this course students will able to calculate and define dielectric polarization they will also able to calculate dielectric constraint and other properties of the given material so these are actually the course outcome
now uh, before starting uh, today's topic i hope that as the students are those passing out from class 12 they are taking admission for btech first year degree students so they already have a little bit knowledge of this chapter in your class 12 physics because they have a idea of electrostatics where they have read that coulomb's law of force electrostatic fields and gauss's law etc they also have a idea of conductor and insulator uh, i want to and uh, i want to remind you that uh, that what is coulomb's law of force that you have studied uh, in your class 12 that is it's a, it's law states the laws of attraction it's a force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges is is directly proportional to the product of magnitude of two charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them you have also know what is your uh, electric field so electric field or electrostatic fields is defined as force electrostatic force per unit charge and you have also studied about gauss's law for electrostatics that is that says the total normal electric flux through a closed surface is equals to 1 by epsilon times total charge enclosed by the surface that things you know and you also know the what is conductor and what is insulator because this idea is necessary to understand the chapter dielectrics okay so what is conductor conductor means uh, where the free charges are there lots of uh, examples are there all metals are example of a conductor So, so as free charges are there they can carry the electricity current from one place to another and what is insulator so in case of insulator no free charges is there okay the band theory is there due to for the expansion of this where the jump of electron from valence band to connect band band but here this things is not uh, needed for uh, this chapter but you have to know what is the idea Okay. So, so insulator, insulator uh, that's, that's a very important because in case of insulator, insulator that band gap is so high between the valence band and conduction band, band. So, so it will, will not uh, sufficient uh, for that electron to achieve that, that amount of energy to jump to the conduction band. band. So, so uh, they are available for, for the movement of conduction of current, of current. So, so no free charges are there in the conduction band so, so in case of insulator they will not able to conduct any electricity so, so these are basics of conductor and insulator now uh, when i am going to tell you about the dielectric chapter so dielectric are basically a insulator okay uh, the examples are say uh, any kind of oil plastic if lawn uh, glass these all are example of dielectric so you may think about that these are also a uh, example of insulator okay so dielectrics are basically a insulator but it has some special property due to the application of external electric fields that makes it uh, different from the insulator okay, okay. so uh, uh, now, now i will uh, tell you in details what is dielectrics and what are the corresponding properties of this material okay, okay. so uh, dielectric polarization so dielectric before uh, to know the dielectric material so dielectric material is an electrical insulator that can be polarized by an applied electric field So, so when a dielectric material is placed in an electric field electric charges do not flow through the material as they do in a electrical conductor but only slightly shift from their average equilibrium position causing dielectric polarization because of dielectric polarization positive charges are displaced in the direction of the field and negative charges shifted in the direction opposite to the field for example 
if the field is moving in the positive x direction the negative charges will shift in the negative x axis this creates an internal electric field that reduces the overall field within the dielectric itself if a dielectric is composed of weakly bonded molecules those molecules not only become polarized but also reorient so that their symmetry axis align to the field so as i have already told you that dielectrics are basically a insulator so it has the ability to be polarized when you apply external electric field so ability to be polarized that means uh, due to application of that electric field the charges are shifted from their equilibrium position and they are arranged in a, all the molecules or atoms are arranged in a particular manner parallel to the direction of applied electric field so these material are aqueous dipole moment so uh, an, an internal electric field will generate to oppose that external electric field so that electric field is called electric field for polarization so this whole phenomena is called dielectric polarization so where we if you we draw that external electric field so again that uh, it will all the molecules those are arranged in a particular manner parallel to the direction of applied electric field they again come back to their equilibrium position to make it neutral so then you will not won't find any electric field or internal electric field or dipole moment so dielectric polarization phenomena will happen only due to application of external electric fields and they acquire simultaneously dipole moment so this whole phenomena is defined as dielectric polarization and the dielectric materials are electrical insulator which can be polarized by application of external electric field okay so uh, after knowing this you have understand what is dielectric material and what is your dielectric polarization phenomena but but at it is a phenomena uh, to understand in a very clear way you have to know some expression of this phenomena dielectric polarization because as it is a term you know uh, this thing is happened that thing is happened but um, you can't relate with some expression or with some known term okay so uh, always we are searching for some known term which can be relate with the unknown phenomena so here also uh, you hope you have understand the dielectric polarization phenomena but uh, now i will show you what is the mathematical expression or how can you relate the dielectric polarization with your known term so uh, dielectric polarization are mathematically expressed as dipole moment per unit volume so here capital p is a vector quantity so capital p is denoted by dielectric polarization and that is equals to limit del v tends to zero small del p by del v so small del p is the change of dipole moment and del v is the change of small amount of volume of that dielectric material so uh, this is the definition of dielectric polarization now uh, to relate it with our known term uh, what i will do i'll consider a dielectric slab here uh, in the diagram you can see uh, that i have considered a dielectric slab a block of length del l cross sectional area del a and there is a surface charge density that charge density is generated due to the application of external electric field e in a positive x direction so here the neg negative side that left side that is plus sigma p is the surface charge density for polarization and right hand side that is minus of sigma p that is surface charge density for polarization and electric field e 
surface P is generated in opposite to the direction of applied external electric field. So del A is the length of the block and del A is the cross sectional area of this block. So uh, in your electrostatic chapter you may know that how you will calculate the dipole moment. So the, to calculate the dipole moment that is equals to charge density into area into length. So here I have substituted that value small del B that is equals to sigma P plus del A into del L. Now that quantity del A into del L area into length that will give you the volume of that dielectric slab. So you can replace del A into del L by del V. So what you will get dipole moment is equals to sigma P into del V. Now, if you substitute the value of dipole moment in the expression of dielectric polarization, so what you will get your del V del V that volume will cancel out and ultimately you will get that dielectric polarization is nothing but surface charge density for polarization that is generated due to the application of external electric field. Hope that now you understand it is very clear to you what is the dialectic phenomena and how the it mathematically can be expressed. The volume density of polarization of charge that can be represented by rho suffix p that is equals to minus of del dot p where del is the vector differential operator and capital P is the dielectric polarization. I will show in the next slide uh, how you will derive this expression. Okay, so uh, now this is the expression of dielectric polarization. It is nothing but surface charge density for polarization. Now uh, the next point that is dielectric constant. So what is dielectric constant? Dielectric constant is nothing but the ratio of electrostatic fields in media in free space to that in medium. So E naught by E that will give you the dielectric constant. Now if you, as you know how can you represent the electrostatic field the, in SI unit the magnitude of electric field can be represented as 1 by 4 pi epsilon q by r square or r cap into r cap. So if you substitute the value of r cap which is the unit vector then you will get the value of E is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon Q vector R by R cube and also for a free space or air medium E naught that is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q vector R by R cube. So if you substitute that value you will get that dielectric constant is nothing but the ratio of permittivity of the medium to that in free space because epsilon naught is called permittivity of the medium. So as it is a ratio of permittivity of the medium to that in free space, so it is it can be defined as relative permittivity. Okay. So uh, another definitions are there for dielectric constant. It is capital D by epsilon naught e or in uh, terms of surface charge density it can be represented as sigma free charge that means free charge density with uh, uh, divided by sigma free charge minus sigma polarization okay so these are the different type of definition of dielectric constant or uh, permittivity which is called relative permittivity as it is a ratio of permittivity of medium to that in free space. So this is your dielectric constant. Now uh, from the definition of the uh, dielectric constant we have found a new vector that is capital D which is generally called displacement vector because as electric field strength generally depends upon the medium. So as in a dielectric we are deals with a electrical insulator so we have to be independent of the medium so here we consider another vector displacement vector that is defined in such a way that it depends only on the magnitude of charge and distribution of charge so it is 
certainly independent of the medium okay so the value of the displacement vector d can be written as 1 by 4 pi q vector r by r q so no epsilon terms is there no permittivity terms is there which actually depends on the medium that means that d vector displacement vector is independent of the medium so how can you relate the displacement vector with your electric field vector so you simply divide and multiply by epsilon okay so that makes it capital d is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon q vector r by r cube into epsilon so the first whole term is actually give you the magnitude of e which actually gives you the relation between displacement vector and electric field vector so capital d equals to epsilon e so you can say that e is equals to capital d by epsilon so e is electrostatic field strength that is always dependent of the medium whereas the displacement vector is independent of the medium it only depends on the magnitude of charge and distribution of charge now i will show you some derivation which is very important because uh, if you uh, search in last 5 to 10 years question bank so you will find this derivation is there in question uh, in alternative semester or in every semester because so it is very important for you that proof of d equals to epsilon naught e plus p so relation of displacement field vector with electric field vector and polarization vector okay so how will derive that i have shown you here so you can pretend you know that d is equals to epsilon e okay so if you substitute the value of epsilon where epsilon equals to epsilon naught into 1 plus j and j can be represent here as a dielectric susceptibility so capital p equals to epsilon naught j into e so if you substitute this two value in d equals to epsilon naught e what you will get you will get d equals to epsilon naught e within bracket 1 plus j so after multiply you will get d equals to epsilon naught e plus epsilon naught j into e so last term epsilon naught j into e that will be equals to the dielectric polarization capital p so that makes it simple that d equals to epsilon naught e plus p so uh, xi that is actually defined as a dielectric susceptibility so definition how can you define that it is a ratio of polarization per unit volume to the net electric field as modified by the induced charge on the surface of the dielectric so this is called dielectric susceptibility so xi is equals to capital p by epsilon naught e now uh, another important derivation uh, that is relation between dielectric constant and susceptibility so how you will derive this you uh, may start that uh, from that expression d equals to epsilon naught plus e plus p so uh, you substitute the value of d d equals to epsilon e plus epsilon naught e plus epsilon naught j into e so after substituting all these value what you will get epsilon naught e into epsilon naught e taking command within bracket 1 plus j so uh, e e will be cancelled out from the both side and you will find epsilon by epsilon naught that is equals to 1 plus j so epsilon by epsilon naught is nothing but the relative permittivity or your dielectric constant so what you will find dielectric constant is equals to 1 plus j so this is the relation between dielectric constant and dielectric susceptibility now uh, another derivation that is relation between induced and free charge okay so from the definition of dielectric constant 
uh, it is a ratio of free charge density with the difference between free charge density and charge density for polarization so we can simply write k equals to sigma free by sigma free minus sigma p so uh, multiply uh, cross multiplication uh, and rearranging you will find sigma p that is equals to sigma free into 1 minus 1 by k now uh, in both side you just multiply with the surface area a that will give you give you a into sigma p equals to a into sigma free into 1 minus 1 by k where k is the dielectric constant so uh, surface charge density into area that will give you a charge density for polarization that is equals to uh, uh, charge density for polarization into area that is equal to charge density for free space into area into 1 minus 1 by k ultimately give you charge for polarization equals to charge for free space into 1 minus 1 by k okay uh, another proof uh, this p capital p equals to epsilon e into k minus 1 so as we know the susceptibility equals to capital P by epsilon naught E. So cross multiplication will give you capital P equals to epsilon naught E into xi. So as we know the relation between dielectric constant and susceptibility is k equals to 1 plus xi. So if you substitute the value of xi you will get capital P equals to epsilon naught E into k minus 1. Now, uh, the applications in capacitors. So, uh, commercially manufactured capacitors typically use a solid dielectric material with high permittivity as the interfering medium between the stored positive and negative charges. So, this material is often referred in technical context as capacitor dielectric the most obvious advantage to using such a dielectric material is that it prevents the conducting plates on which the charges are stored from coming into direct electrical contact more significantly However, a high permittivity allows a greater stored charge at a given voltage. This can be seen by treating the case of a linear dielectric with permittivity epsilon and thickness D between the two conducting plates with uniform charge density sigma E. So, in this case, uh, I will show you how you can derive the expression of capacitance. Uh, so, I have considered here a parallel plate capacitor uh, having the separation small d the, within that dielectric have placed having permittivity epsilon naught and the charges on the plates are plus q and minus q electric field capital E is applied and the surface area of this plate is capital A okay so the surface charge density can be represented as epsilon naught sigma equals to epsilon naught v by d so rearranging where v is the potential difference that create between these two plates or that show potential difference v that can be represented as V equals to sigma by epsilon naught into D. So, uh, you can represent the potential also like that Q by epsilon naught A into D by substituting the value of surface charge density sigma. That is value is Q by A. So, if you substitute that value, what you will get? You will get V equals to Q by epsilon A into D. So, the capacitance per unit area that can be represented as 
c equals to q by v so uh, if you substitute this value of v here so q q will be cancelled out and ultimately you will get the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor that is equals to epsilon naught a by d where epsilon naught is the permittivity of uh, free space as here i am considered free space as a uh, directory constant so uh, if you replace that space with some uh, other dielectric material having dielectric constant epsilon naught c so this will be replaced by epsilon naught so uh, you will get here epsilon naught c equals to epsilon naught a by d now uh, using this formula uh, some numericals is there for your practice first one a uh, parallel plate capacitor is filled with an insulating material with a dielectric constant of 2.6 so k value is 2.6 the distance between the plates of the capacitor is given that is 0 0.2 meter find the plate area if the new capacitance is 3.4 microfarad so uh, for this kind of a problem first uh, the pro procedure is you just convert all the units in the same SI or CGS unit better here to convert on all the value in a SI unit so um, microfarad uh, that will be equals to 3.4 into 10 to the power minus 6 farad okay and other value that is given uh, in the terms of SI unit so as the formula c equals to k into epsilon naught a by d so you substitute all these value and you will get from here the value of a the area that is equals to 29.6 meter square so epsilon naught that value uh, is uh, the relative uh, the permittivity for free space that is 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 so i have substituted here and get the value so the second question is if a parallel plate capacitor uh, went through the following changes simultaneously how would the capacitance be affected if k doubles that means if directly constant doubles uh, if the plate separation halves if the plate area is quadruples so uh, the formula is same the basic formula you have to use that c equals to k into epsilon naught a by d so first you, uh, if you put k doubles so if for first case c1 is uh, k in second c1 is 2k so uh, by this process you can easily find out what is the relation between this initial capacitance with the final capacitance because uh, co dielectric constants will be double area would be really, uh, quadruple that means 4a and the separation between is half that means d will be d by 2 so if we substitute all this value i will get that c2 that means new capacitance will be 16 times of initial capacitance another examples are there uh, a square parallel plate capacitor the length of each side is x with plate separation d and a circular parallel plate capacitor diameter x and the separation d are both filled with the same dielectric material k equals to 3.8 so dielectric constant is given uh, which of the capacitors have a large capacitance okay uh, explain your answer given that the length of the uh, square plate is 1.65 meter and determine the k for the dielectric that must be inserted into the circular capacitor so that equal capacitance results for each capacitance so here uh, again the same formula you can see here i have uh, derived the solution in details okay so uh, you can check here so ultimately you will get the dielectric constants for circular plate that will be equals to 4.8 considering the same formula as i have told you before that is capacitance will be equals to k into epsilon naught a by d okay uh, problem 4 that is another problem related to this okay so you may uh, practice lots of this kind of problem so uh, these are the reference book that uh, you can consult the theory is there and lots of solution or numericals is there you may practice from these reference books so the uh, evaluation process are same uh, you have to appear for an internal exam of 30 marks okay in uh, for which examination of 15 marks assignment or quiz for 10 marks and attendance for 5 marks and you have to appear for an end semester exam which will be going 
were going to help for the marks of 70. Hope all of you have understand the dialectics that I have explained in this video. In next video, uh, I will complete the rest part of the dialectics. Thank you.